Okay, so let's talk about why you should stop using online algebra calculators. And some of you are going to be like, hey, what are you talking about? You know, uh, stop using that. You might even have this expression. You might be like, mm, you know, like, I'm not using online. Uh, I'm not going to stop using these tools. They're awesome. Well, listen, I'm going to tell you right now that uh, for the majority of people, okay, these calculators, although they're excellent tools, um, can really actually be detrimental to you learning uh, mathematics or algebra. And I'm going to explain to you why. Then I'm also going to uh, kind of uh, take the other side of the argument and tell you where you where you do want to be, uh, you know, getting to know and how to use these tools. So I don't want to make it this into, you know, me bashing online algebra calculators because they are an excellent uh, tool and a resource. But like any tool and resource, it can be abused and we're more... What we're talking about here is learning mathematics. So I'm going to get into uh, my point here in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabla Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. I'll let you be the judge of that. You can check out my uh, math help program by following the link in the description of this video, but basically I have 100 plus different math courses. I have all the main courses, Algebra, Geometry, Algebra 2, College Algebra, Give me launch your pre-calculus here, uh, pre-algebra, uh, tons of other different courses, but I do a lot in the area of test preparation. So if you're preparing for a test like uh, the GED, SAT, ACT, a GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, uh, Accuplacer, Alex, CLEP. <laughs> you can see there's a ton of ton of exams. There's so many more uh, exams, especially in the area of, like, say, teacher certification exams. There's a lot of math on those uh, those uh, tests. And if you don't pass those tests, you don't get your certification and you can't teach. Or, like, nursing entrance exams. If you don't pass the math on that, you don't get into nursing school. So a lot of people are studying mathematics uh, to prepare for these particular exams. So I offer great comprehensive test prep uh, courses. You can check those out on my website. Again, the link is in the description of this video. I should have your exam. If I don't, drop me a line and I'll help you out the best I can. I also work with uh, independent learners like uh, homeschoolers, so have a great homeschool learning system. And then obviously I have a ton of uh, people that I just help in mathematics that are struggling, okay, and are, you know, just, you know, having a difficult time. Uh, don't stay in that scenario. Do something to help yourself, right? So my program can help you out. But one thing you could be doing to help yourself out, and you must be doing, and that is taking great math notes. Over decades of teaching mathematics, just one thing is clear to me. Those students who take great math notes almost always have excellent math grades, and the reverse is true. Those students who were like myself way back in the good old days, distracted, talking to my buddy next to me, and if I had a cell phone, boy, I don't even know if I would have graduated. That thing is just completely distracted, distracting. So you got to put these things away, and you have to focus, okay? Your ability to focus is the key to success, not only in math, but just in life in general, okay? And evidence of focusing is your notes. And the better your notes are, the better you are focusing. It just kind of works like that. And if you have your paying attention and your focus, guess what? Most of you are going to do very, very well in mathematics. But for those of you that have to, uh, you know, do uh, really do a 180 in your note taking, you still need something to study from. So I offer detailed, comprehensive math notes to include pre algebra, algebra one, or so pre algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find links to those notes in the description of this video. Now, let's talk about uh, online calculators. What kind of calculators am I talking about? Well, am I talking about these kind of calculators? All right, here's a little calculator, here's a little window. So let's, let's call this like a, um, hey, let's just classify calculators real quick. Let's call this a basic calculator. All right, everyone's got those big old buttons on there, right? There's just not many functions, and it does like the basic stuff uh, for us. Okay, so this would be something like maybe like an elementary student uh, could possibly be uh, introduced to. Now, come to, to like say middle school, we uh, get into scientific calculators, right? Scientific calculators. And these guys have more functions, like trigonometric functions and some other advanced functions. And um, generally speaking, in middle school, you'll start uh, needing to kind of learn about scientific calculators. So then you get into high school or college and you kind of graduate to the big guys. And those are the graphing calculators, which are awesome, like a TI-84, 
Uh, these are absolutely amazing uh, calculators, super powerful. So any of you out there that are going to be like, you know, engineers or whatnot, and a lot of you out there in high school, depending on your course, you're going to need a graphing calculator. So this is like a high school, college uh, level calculator. But, you know, they, they grab functions and everything else, and they're like, com they are computers. Let's just say that much. Whereas scientific calculator, you could do things like trigonometric uh, functions, and then a basic calculator is like 2 plus 2, that kind of stuff. But back in the good old days, you know, um, so there wasn't really, you know, these calculators, I'm talking like in the 70s, late 70s, 80s. Uh, well, not even the 80s, like the early 80s, maybe late 70s, really, people just had access to, you know, some of these basic calculators that just had basic functions, and you had to do a lot of stuff by hand calculation, right? It wasn't until, like, I would say into the 80s that you started, you know, having more access to scientific calculators, but, you know, graphing calculators, you know, these things were just mind-boggling, and these really, I would say in the 90s, I've done videos, um, on graphing calculators, but definitely in the in the mid to late 90s, let's say, you know, there was the TI-83, Texas Instrument uh, 83. And this was an awesome uh, calculator. I still have calculators, you know, 25 years old that, that still work great, okay? So, by the way, once you take, uh, buy the, purchase these, these aren't cheap, okay? You probably have to spend like at least $100 if not more, maybe to 150, you probably could spend even more on these calculators. So guard them because I've had far too many students, you know, um, had their calculators taken from them, lost, and they're like, hey, where's my calculator? So, you know, treat these things, you know, um, you know, as they are valuable instruments. But um, these calculators are useful tools. You need to know how to use these calculators. These are powerful calculators. These are supplemental um, tools to learning mathematics. This is not what I'm talking about, okay? These are great, great tools, okay? And you need this. You shouldn't be doing, you know, like long division or arithmetic, you know, in, in high school trigonometry, right? That's not what I'm talking about. So these are the calculators that I'm not talking about. What I'm talking about is these guys. So let me see if I can just kind of just sketch this out, practice my basic uh, artistic skills. So let's say this is your laptop. Okay, and here's your little keypad, and here is you. Oh, this is a gigantic laptop, but you kind of get the picture, and here's your hand, and you're like, hmm, I got to do my math homework. I got to do my algebra homework, and I got to figure out 2x squared minus x plus 9 is equal to 0. So you're like, hmm, I got to do that. Well, I need to know what the answer is. So you're going to go on to the Internet, and you're going to plug this into a online like algebra calculator, right? And you could plug this thing in. You could be like, okay, plug in 2x squared minus x plus 9 equals 0. Hit enter. Boom. There's my answers, right? This is the type of calculator that I'm talking about. And this is the stuff that's going to get you in trouble, okay? Because you, if you go and you're like, I don't want to do the work, but I just need to get the answer. You are not learning. You're just, this is a recipe for disaster. And I'm going to share with you a very, very, very quick story of what happened to me um, in my freshman year in college. And this, uh, this was quite embarrassing. Um, laptops were just, just coming out. It was a long time ago. And uh, the software back in those days came in like a little floppy disk, okay? So I bought this um, Apple computer, and real, just basic, but I was like, okay, I got this uh, as a freshman in college, and the first little um, cassette, little uh, software that I bought was a Spanish, a Spanish translator, because I was like, I was taking Spanish, I was terrible at it, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to buy this little... Uh, translator Spanish and I um gonna install it and I that's what I did okay but this was like years and years and years ago like 30 over 30 years ago so my first homework assignment was to write like a little thing in English like or write sorry write um a little essay 
in Spanish, like where I'm from, you know, what's my hobbies, you know, just a basic assignment. So what did I do? Well, I was trying to cheat the system. I installed my little software and I'm like, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, uh, bypass actually trying to learn Spanish. So I, I typed out my thing. Hey, my name is John. I'm from Southern California. I like to, you know, run, blah, 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 whatever. So I, I wrote my little uh, one or two paragraph um, essay in English. I hit the little button for translation and boom, it popped out in Spanish. And it was pretty cool looking because it looked like Spanish words. And I was like, oh, okay, awesome. You know, uh, you know that was quick. Uh, so I, that's what I turned in. I turned that paper, this paper into my teacher. So my teacher uh, would, you know, said, okay, we're going to, everyone's going to get someone else's paper and we're going to read these assignments out loud. So, you know, most people, you know, they're all like, oh, I'm reading Jill's and Jill's, you know, me amo, me amo, I think I'm saying that right, is, is Jill, soy de California, me gusta, whatever, you know, it made sense. Like, <laughs> she, this person wrote a nice basic essay uh, in basic Spanish because they actually did the work. Then someone came to mine and it was like, my name is John. I am from the moon. I am uh, backwards. Per I mean, it was completely incoherent. It made absolutely no sense. It was completely embarrassing. And mine was the only one that was like that. Yeah, I was like, oh my goodness. It was the most embarrassing, one of the most embarrassing things that have happened to me in, in the class. And I was like, you know, oh my. and the teacher was like, what did you do? You couldn't even, you had to work hard at, at you know, even like somebody who didn't even know Spanish could even speak more Spanish than that. So what did I do? Well, I trusted. I sh I would try to take a shortcut. Okay, I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna skate the system, and you know, I'm going to um, just not put in the work and just hope for the best, and you know, use uh, technology to you know help me out. And it back completely backfired on me. And I've seen this uh, same thing with online algebra calculators. Okay. As a math teacher, I've worked with so many students and I've had students, oh, you know, try to learn by plugging things in to, you know, software to get answers, but you're not learning. You are not learning. These tools are um, a resource for those of you that already know how to solve a problem like this. Let's say this is a quadratic equation problem. If you already know how to solve it and you understand the steps, then you can use this tool as, uh, you know, to assist you to take a look at the solutions, so maybe to look at the graph and kind of study it. They're not designed as, uh, of, um, as tools to replace your brain, okay, uh, and your ability to understand this. But far too many students use these online algebra calculators. Remember, this, these things are fairly new relative to, to, you know, how many years I've been around. Okay, this wasn't around, let's say, in the 90s or whatnot. So I'm speaking more to the current generation and younger generation. And, you know, students will go plug it in. And then, then you get this like, well, you know, my problem must be right. You must be wrong because the calculator told me so. But what they end up doing, they, they'll, they'll end up not even using the calculator correct. Or they don't understand what the calculator is saying. And sometimes the calculator is even wrong. I don't know if you know this or not, but even in math textbooks, like a nice, big, beautiful math textbook that you might use in school, there are mistakes in probably almost all math textbooks. There's little errors uh, in them. And then, then, you know, they have to be revised out and everything else. There's errors everywhere. And so just because it's on the Internet or it's some sort of calculator doesn't mean that it's going to be 100% right. Okay, so... This can really mess up a lot of students. They put a lot of effort into just going to the calculator to help them out, or they'll have the calculator there with them as they're kind of doing the work and checking. So I would strongly advise that you do not use these guys, okay? When you're studying a subject like algebra, trigonometry, um, whatever the case is, learn the process, learn the actual concepts, the skills, the procedures, you know, focus on good old fashioned, you know, paper and pencil. That's going to go, you know, 10,000% uh, higher in terms of your retention and what you need. Okay. Now, like anything, technology and tools have its place. So when, you know, when do you use calculators? When, you know, when are these things really, really good? Well, these are actually very good tools and there's actually very sophisticated uh, math software programs. You kind of learn a lot of these. Some of them you might learn in kind of be introduced to in high school, but when you get into college, like let's say engineering uh, programs or mathematics or computer science, then you really do need to 
use advanced uh, mathematical tools, softwares that help you do these calculations. But we're talking about doing calculations for calculus or differential equations, engineering type problems where you do need a calculator, do, you do need assistance in that. But these people who use the, uh, you know, this online software at that level already know the mathematics. That's the key. You already know the math. They're using it as a resource, as a tool. But again, you know, especially high school students, they'll they'll not learn the math and they're taking shortcuts like I did with my Spanish uh, little essay. And, uh, you know, that taught me from, you know, at that point, I'm like, hmm, you know, take this thing out and throw it away. You know, maybe who knows today, maybe that software would have been better. But the point is, is this, OK, if you really want to learn something, depend on your brain. Don't outsource it to technology. Okay, there's a time and place for using technology as a resource, but um, you know, of course, in this day and age, um, there's so much online free tools and everything else. It's tempting. So I understand the temptation to use these tools, okay, to help you figure out a problem. But rather than going to those online calculators, what you really need to focus on is also how to use these calculators, all right? Especially these guys right here, they're scientific and your graphing calculators. These are very, very powerful. And if you don't know how to use these correctly, and these are the ones that you're gonna be really um, expected to know how to use in your math courses, all right? So uh, read up on the directions on these things, ask your teacher you know, how to use them. And there's some common mistakes that students make with these guys, because again, it's a tool, right? There's a little, you know, I've done videos and some of my other uh, playlists, my algebra playlist mistakes, where if you, you know, you think you're typing the right button, but it's actually the wrong button and you're going to, you know, get the wrong result. Remember, these are tools. There's just no way of getting around it. If you really, really want to do well in mathematics, you got to learn, you know, the actual subject, okay? And, and not confuse tools with learning. And that's why note taking is tremendously important. And hopefully at the end of this video, you're like, okay, that wasn't so bad. You know, maybe, maybe I'll, maybe I'll be like, uh, okay, grudgingly, you know, stop using those things. And I'm not saying, hey, 100% stop using them. Well, if you like going to them, that's fine. Use your discretion, but just don't confuse you getting the answer on online algebra calculator is the same thing as you understanding the actual mathematics, okay? And I'm pretty sure your teacher is not gonna let you have your, you know, your iPad or your laptop next to you as you're taking a uh, math test, you know? So consider that as well. All right, so even though you may not have liked this video in terms of mm, not using those calculators, but if you think you've got something from it, you know, if you're like, all right, I understand your point, please consider smashing that like button. That helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for a long time, 10 plus years. It's a great platform for someone like myself who's obsessed with teaching math in a clear and understandable way. I want to keep you excited about actually learning the topic, okay? Because you can go much further in math than you probably currently think. All right, so uh, for my best math resources, you want to check out those links in the description of this video. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.